Poughkeepsie residents, clergy, partnership, scenic huts and board staff and stakeholders. My name is Minister Desiree S. King, along with my co-minister, Joinia C. Joyner. You will hear from her at the closing portion of this presentation. I open this presentation with great enthusiasm. As associate ministers at St. Mark AME Zion Church, situated in front of the near future Pershing Avenue Community Garden. The project focuses on teaching, gardening, feeding, and healing. As ministers of the gospel in every faith around the city of Poughkeepsie, our main accountability is to love and serve God's people. This project encompasses those same values beginning with this community call. Let us bear in mind that as we embark on this wonderful project, communication with our residents be a committed mind of Poughkeepsie first and not ourselves. As we move through this presentation, I solicit Poughkeepsie residents and clergy to comment in the chat box provided there. There are live members of the partnership ready and waiting to answer questions, suggestions, and concerns. God bless you all, and we look forward to serving your needs. Be well and stay safe. Now I present Scenic Hudson board member, Mr. Mario Johnson. Uh, good evening, everybody. I am so glad to be here. This is an exciting opportunity for all of us. I see we have a number of panelists that have joined us. I'm excited to obviously move this project forward. We have a, a great lineup today to talk about some of the exciting things happening on Pershing Avenue. And as a board member, as well as a community volunteer, this happens to be one of, I would say, a, uh, a momentous project that we've actually taken uh, the initiative to bring something that's gonna be beneficial to everybody in the community. So with that said, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Jamie Lovato and she can introduce herself. Thank you, Jamie. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Lovato from Poughkeepsie Farm Project. I'm really glad to be here with all of you today. Um, we are looking forward to getting a sense of who is here in the room. So please go ahead and if you haven't already, change your name to, um, to what your actual name is if you're able to do that or just type your name into the chat box. And we are also wondering, trying to get some ideas since we are talking gardens a bit today, what is the best vegetable you have ever eaten? So please do share uh, your favorite vegetable along with your name. And uh, I am going to just read aloud some of what gets shared. So that way we get a little sense of uh, what kind of vegetables this group enjoys. I see asparagus on the list, spinach. Got some yummy green ones. Oh, cherry tomatoes. We have, oh, a whole list here. Potato, eggplant, okra, lettuce, curly kale, green beans, kale, okra. All right, so I think we've got a vegetable loving crowd here and that is wonderful because there are going to be, uh, well, you're gonna be talking about some opportunities to grow vegetables. I'm gonna just add a couple more in here. I see sweet peppers, garlic scapes, yum. All right, so what we're gonna talk about next is our communication norms. And what this means is, um, the ways in which we're going to be communicating together um, while we're here on this webinar. So I'm just gonna go through each one and uh, just give a little bit of uh, sort of definition of what we're talking about. So in order so that we can all uh, be able to actively participate and have a respectful and uh, kind community gathering, these are our communication norms. We're talking about taking space and making space. And so that means that um, if you're somebody who tends to have a quieter voice and uh, it's maybe a little harder to speak up, we're asking you to take, take that step and uh, try to make your voice heard. Um, please share in, uh, in the chat as much as possible. If you find yourself somebody who um, maybe does a lot of sharing and maybe has lots of opportunities for sharing, this might be a time to consider stepping up your listening and really trying to uh, hear what other folks have to say. 
We also want to create space for multiple truths and norms. And what we mean here is that um, although we are all here in Poughkeepsie together, um, people have a lot of different backgrounds and life experiences and uh, ways of looking at things. So we want to make sure that there's space for seeing different situations and examples um, in different ways and, and being respectful and thoughtful about the experiences that other people have had. Um, we want to avoid fixing, correcting, or advising. This is, this is an opportunity to share ideas, um, but we're going to um, just try to keep uh, listening and not trying to, um, to make corrections about what somebody else is, is sharing or offering. We know that um, nobody knows everything on their own, but when we come together as a group, Together we know a lot, which is why we really want as many voices heard. And with that, I do want to just say if you have a friend or a neighbor or a colleague that is not on this call and you think um, should be, please reach out to them right now and share the information so they can uh, join us because we'd love to make sure we have as many folks here as possible. In addition, um, there will be other opportunities to, to get involved, to learn and share. Um, and then we also know that our community members, the people who live here in Poughkeepsie are experts. And so we wanna make sure we make space for learning and for um, getting advised with that expertise. So that's why we're inviting the community in today to, um, to share that expertise with, with everyone here. Okay. Well, thank you, Jamie. Well, tonight, uh, we can go to the next slide. Tonight, we have a number of things we want to talk about, and we want to try to keep this very informal, but very informative. So with that said, we're going to give you, we're going to talk about our panelists. They're going to introduce themselves as they come on. Also, we're going to talk about the city of Poughkeepsie bond update and also Pershing Park updates, since there's a lot of things that have been happening over the last several months. And we really want to get your feedback on any of the new park elements and some of the things we're trying to bring into the park. Without your input or without the hearing from the community, we're kind of doing this on our own. That's one thing we don't want to put out there. We want to make sure we work with everybody, the local residents, city of Poughkeepsie residents, and of course, the neighborhood and other community-based organizations. So so we're going to give you a community garden overview. We're going to be talking about the park amenities and, of course, most importantly, also some of the potential park programming because we want to have just more than just uh, growing vegetables and food and stuff like that. We really want to see if we can get the community engaged with some of the various programming that we would like to plan and offer. And, of course, most importantly, we really want to see people sign up for the garden plots. So we're going to be talking about a number of things. And we really want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to be heard. So with that, what I'd like to do is I would like to introduce uh, Zoraida and Felicity so they can talk about all of the wonderful things that they've been working over the last several months, as well as what's happening with the Pershing Avenue Park. So without further ado, Ms. Zoraida, take it away. Thanks so much, Mario. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Zoraida Lopez-Diago, and I'm the River Cities Program Director at Scenic Hudson. I wanted to take just a few moments to talk about the park and just give a little background on how we got here. In 2016-2017, Scenic Hudson hosted quite a few community listening sessions where we spoke to different community residents and community leaders. And one thing we've heard from that point on up until now um, was the need for engaging local youth and involving young people in the city of Poughkeepsie. Another thing we heard time and time again is, is food access, which is something I'm sure we all believe on this call that everyone deserves access to good, clean produce grown close to home. Through these sessions, we also learned about Pershing Park and through these sessions, we learned about how the park is located within a five minute walk of thousands of families, how it's, it's close to this amazing church, St. Mark's AME Zion Church, how it's around the corner. And we really were able to work with our community partners to think about how this park can really turn into a neighborhood gem and a treasure for everyone in the Pershing neighborhood to be a part of and enjoy. 
Most recently, the city of Poughkeepsie issued a bond for $325,000. And those funds will go towards reinvesting and reconstructing Pershing Park. So in addition to the garden project, which will feature 19 community garden plots, an urban farm, the park will also be revitalized for everyone in the neighborhood to enjoy. Um, with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to our partners at New City Parks, and they're gonna talk a little bit about park updates and lead us through a poll. Thank you, Zoraida. Um, my name is Sarah Stack, and I work with Felicity Lodge uh, at New City Parks. And um, we're delighted to be here to make a presentation about the work that uh, we're planning to do in Pershing Park. New City Parks has been working with Scenic Hudson and the city of Poughkeepsie for a little over a year now. And we've come up with the plan that you are looking at on your screen right now. Uh, and I thought I would just go over a number of improvements that we are proposing and also just give you an idea of the layout of the park. Um, and uh, most importantly, we are looking for some feedback from you on number, a number of the new elements in the park. Um, you'll see that the basketball courts are um, as they are today. We have not moved them at all. What we are intending to do or proposing to do is to repair the courts, to resurface them, to repaint the lines, and then to replace any broken hoops and backboards. Um, the lower right um, uh, edge of the plan, um, there is an old uh, shed that is there. Um, and the city is going to remove that shed. Um, and what we're proposing is that we're putting in tables with seating there and new trees for shade in the corner there. Um, the five boxes that you see along the edge of the basketball courts and along the edge of Pershing Avenue are tree surrounds. They're tiered boxes that surround trees and we're going to rebuild those and uh, replace one of the trees that has died in the box on the far left to provide shade for spectators so that there's more space to watch the games. To the left of the tree surrounds is a path, which is the access path back to the community garden and the urban garden. Um, and that will provide uh, a way to get back to the garden for gardeners and visitors alike. Um, to the right of the path is the playground area, and that is actually where the playground area is today. Um, we'd love to have your feedback um, on what type of equipment you'd like to see in the playground and what ages, sorry, what ages you would like that equipment um, to, what the equipment should be geared towards, whether it should be geared, what ages. We're gonna be conducting a poll and my colleague Felicity Lodge will be asking questions because um, we'd love to have your feedback on both the design of the playground and also the ages for the playground. The blue rectangular squares that you see on the plan are new tables and benches um, and they are spread throughout the park. We'd also like to know from you if you think that there should be more seating and more tables. Um, as you can see, we've placed tables next to the playground, benches along the edges of the back basketball courts, but perhaps we need, we, sh we need to have more tables and seating, and we'd love to have your feedback on that. The pinwheel type uh, drawings that you see are new trees that will be planted, mostly to provide shade um, and um, against the artifacts mural wall and against the fence line um, to shade the new tree, excuse me, the new tables and seating that we're gonna be putting in. Um, I know that you're not able to provide, uh, to, to ask questions live here, but um, we would really welcome any questions in the chat box. We will make every effort to answer those questions before the end of this Zoom meeting. Um, and thank you so much for your participation. And now I'd like to turn it over to Felicity and let her uh, ask the poll questions. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Felicity Lodge, and I'm really glad to be here as well. Uh, now that Sarah's reviewed the plan, we'd love to get your feedback on the tables and benches and also where you'd like to see more shade in the park. Um, we have poll questions that should be popping up your on your screen right now. Um, would you like more seating at the basketball court? And if so, what type? Where in the park is shade necessary? And where would you like to have tables? We'd also like to present two different playground styles and possible fitness equipment to get a sense of what you would like to see in your park. On the playgrounds, this is really about the look of the equipment. The playground elements like slides, climbers, tunnels, and spinners are available in either style. What you see here is the traditional style, which is what you see on most playgrounds and has colorful posts and elements. And there's a big range of colors available. And then there's a natural playground style that brings in different materials and textures and is colored with natural tones. The playground equipment would be geared towards specific ages of children. So we'll be asking for your feedback on that as well. And then finally, if there's room in the park, we'd like to hear from the, from the community if there's interest in fitness equipment. This equipment that is shown is for ages 13 and up and each piece comes with directions on how to use it. What you're seeing is an example of the type of fitness equipment that could be used. So we have another poll set up to answer questions, which should be popping up on your screen. Yep, um, I'm gonna jump in for just a quick second. So um, it's looking like we've had about three quarters of folks vote um, on the first seating and shades. So I'm just gonna give them a couple oh, more sorry. seconds to vote on that. Nope, that's okay. And then I will launch the, uh, the next poll question. Um, so if you didn't vote on that first one, you can get your vote in. And then I think now everybody should be able to see the results of that. And so looking at this, take a look and then I'm gonna launch the next poll. And so now everybody should see a new poll up, which is asking about types of playground equipment that Felicity just described. So what type of playground do you prefer? A natural playground or a traditional playground? And what age range is most likely to use the playground? Two to five or six to 12? And then finally, if space allows, would you be interested in having outdoor fitness equipment at the park? All right, we're getting these votes in. So I'll share those results in just a second. We've got about half of the people that are attending that have, have voted on this one. Um, so I'm gonna end this polling and share the results. And I will say that at the end of um, the meeting tonight there, you'll hear about this later, but there's gonna be a survey. So if you have other input that you would like to give on these things, you can you can add some comments later, but here, here's the input that we've gotten so far. That, that's great. And thank you all for giving us your feedback. We're looking forward to kicking off the work in the park this summer, and we really appreciate your time. Next up, we'll be hearing from Anthony, Jamie, Jason, and Will. 
and they'll be providing us with a community garden overview. Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony Kineski. I am the event and community project manager, Scenic Hudson. So I'm here to talk a little bit about what's been going on. So those of you that have been near Pershing Avenue Park, I'm sure have not missed some of the changes to the site. For starters, a lot of trees were removed to help make more sunlight uh, come to the ground so that we can start to build the community garden and urban farm. We've been working with the city on that project uh, to also level the site, uh, make it nice and level for the farm. We have water hookups to it now. We have electric coming. So we are, we're doing what we need to get things ready for the farm and garden site. Is Joe or Will on? Yeah, Anthony. Hi, everybody. This is Joe. I'm a senior parks project manager at Scenic Hudson. And as Anthony mentioned uh, in his introductions there, uh, we've been working very carefully and closely with the city of Poughkeepsie's uh, Department of Public Works crew to do a lot of the original and initial cleanup of the site. As many folks uh, are probably aware, um, the site had kind of been abandoned for many years and had been overgrown with trees and weeds and had been used kind of as a dumping ground. So. Um, the city's crews have worked really, really hard to clean a lot of the debris up. And we've worked with local contractors, um, LCS and Alpine Tree Services to, um, to do some site work and grading to make the site ready for the farm and garden and uh, creating a north meadow that's going to be on the outside of the farm. Um, we're going to be replacing uh, a fence line in between uh, Corley's Manor and and uh, the Pershing Ave site as well. Um, and we're also uh, really excited to be working with a local uh, company called Custom Forest Products that has, um, they do all Hudson Valley based uh, lumber and tree uh, harvesting and then they produce that uh, they produce the lumber for the shed. You know, there's going to be a rough sawn uh, pine shed and rough uh, sawn oak for the raised beds and the gardens. And we're also utilizing um, imported uh, garden soils from Olmstead Nursery up in Hudson, as well as Red Barn Farm down in Wappingers that are producing uh, organic compost and soil blends that will be used in the farm. Um, Really exciting project. Can't wait uh, to be working with Will Artist and his crew uh, to help build out the farm. Um, it's, you know, for a few of us here have been working on this kind of behind the scenes and getting things moving. Um, you know, it's starting to really bring the community in. And that's, you know, that's it's as much about growing community and supporting community as it is about uh, all of the other things that are going to be grown there too. So, Really excited to, to see things move along. All right, ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, my name is William Artist and um, I'm working with Nubian Direction for 11 years as a construction manager now. Um, what I wanna say about this is we have um, the ability to utilize our young people. You're actually, your your children probably um, that are in our program to get this up and running. What we want to do is um, take the community, use the community as um, a catalyst to getting this program and project done. Um, we have a warehouse where we are starting the builds like for the shed, uh, the garden boxes we want to start on soon, the raised beds. The only thing is with the COVID has just stifled us time-wise, but we definitely look forward to getting this project up off the ground and running. Um, we will get this project done. And with the help of, like I said, our young people in the community, 
and this is what's important. They're very eager to get on the ground working with their feet on the ground, hands in, in the pot. They want to get this done. And um, I can't see a better way to christen this project than to have our young, young folks in the, in the community doing this with us. We couldn't do it without them. We couldn't do it without Scenic Hudson. We couldn't do it without the community and the city of Poughkeepsie. On that note, um, maybe I'll pass it back to Jason. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Helena Mazurek. I work with Scenic Hudson as the Event and Community Project Assistant. And here we're just showing you a little bit about what our vision is for the future of Pershing. So you heard a bit about what's been done on the site so far. And this is what we're hoping it's going to look like in the end. You can see that we will have 19 community beds, uh, which will be available for sign up at the end of the meeting. And we'll also be building out an urban farm section starting next year. The difference between them is that the community beds will be available to individuals to grow their own crops and harvest themselves. And the urban farm will be an area that we'll be working with the farm manager with employees and different volunteers to grow produce that which will be given to different communities and organizations around Poughkeepsie um, and be distributed locally through them. We're aside from the farm, we're hoping that Pershing Park will develop to be a community gathering place. There'll be a pavilion built and we are hoping to get some feedback from you a little bit later in the presentation on what sort of programming and workshops you would like to see there. Now I will pass it to uh, Jason and Jamie, who are working with Ecological Citizens Project and the Poughkeepsie Farm Project on sort of the benefits of joining our community garden. Hi again, folks. So um, I'm really excited to talk with you all about community gardening. Um, I was a community gardener for a bunch of years back when I lived in New Paltz, and I found it to be such a wonderful experience to connect with other local gardeners. Um, so I just wanted to talk about what some of what I see as the benefits of community gardening and um, and I would love it if anybody who's here on the, on the call might drop into the chat any of your ideas or um, things that you see as benefits of community gardening. So number one, you can grow delicious and healthy food. It's one of the things I love about gardening and I was able to do that um, when I was living in New Paltz in a very tiny studio apartment. I was able to grow food uh, right there at the community gardens. Um, you can grow flowers and pollinator crops, so you can add some beauty uh, to your environment that you're spending time in. And you know, having access to an attractive green space can really be good for the spirit. Uh, so that's another thing that I found to be an incredible benefit. Um, but I think one of the things that was most of all um, basically top of the experience for being a community gardener for me was the community. So having, I, I still think about and still am connected with some of what I like to call my community gardening neighbors. So the folks who had community gardening plots right next to mine, or even ones that I just happened to walk by on the way to mine. Um, these are folks that you get to know and you can share tips and I got to learn so, so much from other community gardeners. And then I also had the opportunity to share some of what I was learning with other folks who were new to gardening. Um, in addition, there was a lot of sharing of seeds and plants and resources, tips, ideas. Um, and I think just having that opportunity to share and learn and teach each other was one of the absolute most wonderful pieces of being part of a community garden. Um, in addition, uh, at this community garden, there are going to be workshops and other community events, um, which will sometimes be connected to the garden specifically, so gardening workshops, but other times be more um, 
broadly conceived and might be more of a cultural event or um, something less related to actually growing food. Um, but I really, I really hope that um, everybody who uh, is considering uh, applying for a plot does because the, the benefits of community gardening are really wonderful. And again, with a focus on the community. And I'm going to turn it over to Anthony. Hello again, everyone. So first of all, I'd like to say that we do not have the raised beds in. We do not have most of the infrastructure there. So if you would like to get involved before the community plot, community garden process, we will be hosting a few volunteer work days. It'll be next Thursday and the following Thursday for most of the day between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. And if you are interested in helping build the raised beds and such things, please RSVP. RSVP is mandatory because of COVID restrictions. We must keep group sizes to 10 or less. So, so what do you get? So first of all, it is free. It's totally free to get one of these. You just need to apply. So we ask you all to please fill out an application as soon as possible. Uh, we will be going through the application process at the end of next week, and we're hoping to run the lottery a day or two after that. So we do really want to get this going. So if you're interested, please do so. And also, please share it with anyone else you know in the community that might want a plot who's not here with us today. The garden beds are going to be four by eight feet, which is enough space to produce a good amount of produce for your family. We have a diverse uh, set of seeds from flowers to herbs to vegetables that we'll be providing. We're actually starting those seeds tomorrow as long as building a hoop house on site. We'll be providing the tools that you need to do the gardening. We'll have a shed there so you'll have access to the shed. There will be water on site like we mentioned earlier and we will have hoses and jugs so that you can personally water each of your garden plots. Uh, we do ask you though to commit once the growing season gets going about three days a week to your garden plot so that you can take the time needed to water it, uh, weed it, and harvest your produce that's coming. All right, it looks like we've been getting quite a few questions in the chat. Uh, so I'd like to read some of them out uh, for our panelists. I think a couple of them have already been answered. Um, someone asked if there will be bike racks. Yes, we will be having bike racks. Um, there's not parking on site, but there is street parking all along Pershing. And there aren't plans currently to add restrooms to the park. Um, can someone... Uh, how do we apply for the garden plots? There will be a link at the end of the presentation where you can fill out your information and sign up that way. And there will definitely be garbage cans as well. Um, anyone else have any questions? Feel free to use the Q&A feature or the chat and we will have our panelists answer them. Yeah, and uh, Jamie just put the link in the chat for the application too, so folks can just um, click on it right now um, and um, and fill out an fill out an application. So we encourage you to fill it out, tell your friends. Um, I see another one just came in from Liz Harvey. How do you RSVP to volunteer? Um, Anthony, uh, if you want to put your information into the chat box, you can contact Anthony and we would love to have you volunteer, Liz. Thanks so much. I see we have another one from Will Patterson about the plans for the fencing. So if Joe Kiernan or Anthony could chime in on that point. Yeah, um, great question. So uh, yeah, we're currently working with uh, a group from Poughkeepsie, Nia Construction, who's going to be installing the fence around the garden and the farm project. Um, and rustic cedar posts 
with a galvanized wire fencing that's going to extend seven feet above grade and then one foot below grade to try to keep out the burrowing type critters. Um, and there'll be, uh, you know, a vehicular gate there or well, two gate panels that will allow vehicles to come in as needed, but um, will be able to be used for panel uh, for pedestrian access as well. And, um, and those will plan to, you know, to have a lock um, and that the folks who have community garden plots will have, you know, it'll be a combination and they'll be able to access their, their spot as needed. Joe, I guess while we have you on the line, um, will there be composting on the site? Yeah, so um, one of the things that um, we're gonna be working with Nubian Directions uh, and Will and his crew on, in the Youth Build program is to build a compost, uh, a few, like a three bin compost system so that we'll be able to, you know, regenerate from our, you know, the waste clippings and whatnot soil amendments that can be, you know, put back into the garden uh, for future years. So yeah, it's really, really gonna be a nice, a nice thing. And I should mention too that, you know, all the lumber that we're using is all untreated, you know, raw oak uh, or cedar, uh, you know, nothing, just all natural, local from the Hudson Valley, good stuff. I see we have another question coming in. Uh, what are community members able to plant and how will those decisions be made? Um, we'll be talking about that a little bit in the next section, but Anthony, if you just wanna provide a little background to that right now. I was typing in the chat. Can you please repeat the question? Uh, what are community members able to plant and how will those decisions be made? Okay, we well, yeah, are starting off with a wide array of already starter plants that people can choose from the hoop house that's being installed tomorrow. And if you have any suggestions or uh, ideas for what you wanna grow that we may not have provided already, you could just let us know and we can try and get those seeds for you. So it's, it's mostly plots large enough for vegetables and uh, herbs and flowers. Great, thank you. Uh, just another quick question. Did we say that there's going to be a lighting change for the park now that there's gonna be more area? A lighting change? Yeah, maybe, um, will there be additional lights put in? Perhaps Joe can also chime in on this. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the garden, farm area, um, there's no plans to have lights installed up there currently, as you know, the, the farm and garden activities will be during the day. Um, and I believe with the park improvements that, uh, that are being planned, I don't believe there's any additional lighting going to be installed uh, up on the, the garden and farm area or the North Meadow. Thank you so much, panelists. Um, I think we are going to start moving on to the next slide. And I think Robert, your question will be answered in the next section. Thanks so much for all your questions. And we will be having another question break. So don't worry if you haven't gotten yours in yet. All right, so I think some of those questions really lead us into this next topic of what could be grown in a garden plot. So um, I do want to just um, point out some of the things that were brought up in the chat before I get started. Um, I see that Linda made some wonderful suggestions for um, items that may or may not already be on the list. So I'm just gonna say those out loud. Borage, nasturtium, and marigolds, uh, which would be great items to add to the, the seed starting list if they're not already on it. Um, and Robert said, can we plant our own plants and not use the supplied seedlings? Um, I would say that one of the key things that we're trying to keep in mind with this garden is that we want um, for the health and safety of everybody for the plants to be grown organically. Um, 
so that way um, you know we're not using pesticides and contaminating the soil or anything like that so I think that's just a key um, note to to be discussed and to to keep in mind um, so just if you're thinking about um, applying for a garden plot, but you're new to gardening and you're not really sure where to start. I'm just going to talk with you for a few minutes about um, some of the ways that I like to think about um, what to grow in a garden plot. The number one thing to keep in mind is to grow what you like. You know, you might hear about people growing different things in their gardens, but if you don't like tomatoes, you should, probably shouldn't grow tomatoes. But you know, if you love green beans or collard greens or peppers, you probably want to grow a bunch of those. So think about what you like, what people you live with like, and use that as a starting point for what to grow in your community garden plot. Um, next, I like to think of this as keep planting. So you can grow some items, you can plant some items like tomatoes, like collard greens that you plant it once and you can keep harvesting off of it for quite some time. Um, but you might also wanna grow some other crops that you harvest the whole plant. So something like lettuce or radishes, um, turnips, beets. And if you grow something like that, you can plant more of it as the season goes and that's called succession planting. And so, for example, if you like to eat salad with your dinner every night, you might want to plant, say, five lettuce plants or seeds for that amount um, about every three weeks. So that way you will have um, a continuous ability to harvest lettuce every so often. So you just want to think about um, what would work for you in uh, what kinds of foods you wanna be eating. If you look at this picture on the slide, you'll notice that it's made into a grid and that is about uh, square foot gardening, which is a way you can, it's, it's a way to organize your thinking and planning around growing. And you can use that to kind of maximize the space because you will find out in some seed packets and that sort of thing, there's often talk of rows and and spacing between plants. But when you're growing in a raised garden bed, you're not really growing in rows. And so you don't have to have the same amount of space between rows because you're not trying to walk between them because you're getting a lot of plants in a little space. So you can use that as a way to, um, to organize your, your space. Um, another, th another thing I wanted to share is the idea of growing up. So you can use trellises to provide support for plants that are vining or that grow really tall, things like tomatoes or beans or peas or cucumbers. So that way they're not taking up as much ground space and you're growing a little bit more vertically. And uh, lastly, I'm gonna just quickly mention the idea of companion planting. And so that's growing things together that um, complement each other or that provide uh, some sort of benefit. So that's sort of thinking about certain flowers or herbs that you might want to grow next to another crop in order to have some sort of uh, benefit. So because this is just a super small segment, I'm just giving a little tiny overview of some ideas, but um, I, I do see a question here in the chat about one-on-one -on -one coaching and uh, we will be having workshops um, offered by Poughkeepsie Farm Project educators. And there also will be an assistant um, garden educator and community garden steward who will be there um, also as a newer gardener potentially, but also uh, to support folks and help, help folks figure out uh, questions and, and that sort of thing. So, um, let me just see if any other questions, I think the other questions that came in have been answered so far. So I'm actually gonna just uh, turn it over to Jason for a sec uh, before we move on to the next section. Hi, I don't know if folks can hear me. I'm I'm trying to start my video, but I think it's been disabled. So I'll, I'll see.
You should be back up, Jason. And yes, okay. we can hear you. Thank you. Um, so uh, I don't know if folks can see me, but I think you can hear me. So uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Jason Angel. I am a farmer at Long Haul Farm. I'm also a director of the Ecological Citizens Project. And I can just tell from the, the chat that there are definitely some gardeners joining the call today. Um, I am definitely going to try planting Swatzel, which someone threw out, and New Zealand tree collar. Um, which I'm going to get in the garden. So I, I know there are folks out there who, who have a green thumb. Um, our, our role in this project is that the ECP is, is working with the Poughkeepsie Farm Project and Scenic Hudson on the urban farm uh, element of Pershing Park. And so we've helped um, the city of, of Newburgh and the city of Peekskill uh, establish urban farms recently. And we really just know how much um, it can uh, add to a neighborhood um, having an urban farm. And what I quickly want to mention is, you know, we really believe that urban community farms um, are best if they, um, if the farmers working on them reflect the community that they're serving and that they're around. And so our role in this project is we are going to be training a farmer from the city of Poughkeepsie over this summer on our farm um, in Garrison, New York. It will be a paid apprenticeship um, for a city of, of Poughkeepsie resident um, from June till August 31st, uh, about 20 hours a week. And, um, and, and a Poughkeepsie uh, resident will be learning kind of intensive growing practices. So how to get the most food um, out of a small piece of land to feed the surrounding community um, and to use the farm to build community partnerships. And um, after that apprenticeship, um, the, the person that's part of what we call the Regenerative Communities Program will then um, be the uh, community farm manager at Pershing Park for a year um, in, a, in a paid part-time position. And so um, my real ask to all of you that are on the call from the neighborhood around Pershing Park is uh, if you do have a green thumb, you know, in, in the best of all worlds, we hope that someone applies to uh, learn on the farm with us this summer and to uh, take over at the Pershing Park um, to, to run the urban farm who is from the neighborhood, you know, in, in the best of cases. And so I will drop into the chat um, links on how to learn more, in, uh, get more information about the apprenticeship and the farm position. And hopefully um, everybody in the Pershing Park neighborhood who's on this call will um, think of a, a great person to represent the neighborhood and, and be serving um, in the urban farm um, starting in the fall. So I'll drop that in the chat and uh, so excited to be, be part of this project that I know so many folks have been working on. So thanks. And I think if the program is, is going back to normal, we'll be, we'll be turning it over to uh, brainstorming community programming ideas with uh, Barrington and Nikki. Hi, everyone. My name is Nikki Chung. I'm a special pleasure for you guys to be on here today um, to learn about so much that is happening at Persian Avenue. Um, we've spoken already about the design, about what can be grown and how you can apply for the garden plots. And, you know, now we're just going to try to brainstorm some ideas around what programming looked like. Because despite what, how um, the park, all the amenities that's coming to the park and so forth, we have to be able to maintain these by basically having programs implemented that we're proud of, not only that we're proud of, that will serve us, and most importantly, that we're going to enjoy. So the types of programs, um, we're just going to um, ask you about what types of programs that you wanna see at the community garden in the park. You can um, uh, put your answers in the chat. Um, in the meantime, though, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna pass the wands over to um, DC, our DC legislator, um, Barrington Atkins. Uh, there you are. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. 
Um, my name is Barrington Atkins, and I'm the Dutchess County Legislator representing City of Poughkeepsie. Um, we know projects without community input or involvement fail. So now, uh, just to echo back on Nikki Chung, now is the time to use your voice. What do you want to see? What do you think should be in the park? What kind of programming? Um, again, use the chat feature on the bottom, the, the middle of your screen and give us as much input as possible. Because this could really be a transformative space for us all to appreciate. And it's just going to be, it's going to be as big as we can make it with this, all these programming program and just imagine what we could bring to life, whether it could be healing reflection spaces, we could bring fitness uh, workouts there like yoga or kickboxing, of course, post COVID, but um, there's so much that we can have. We can have families gathered there for maybe reading of poetry or um, writing workshops. There's so, there's an array of things that we can start thinking about. Let me look, um, I'm looking at the chat right now. And um, so uh, Liz Michelle, she is uh, suggesting sustainable sustainability gardening at home, youth as stewards of the garden, science behind urban garden, building a garden tool, earth awareness. Um, Denise Barton, excuse me if I pronunciate your name incorrectly, but um, she is saying in addition to gardening, using and preserving the harvest, she would like to see arts and music events. These are really great ideas. Linda Ibrahim um, suggested it would be great to get the local food pantries involved with a plot. Families can come with their kids and harvest vegetables and volunteer with those, those panties to maintain those. Liz Michelle also suggested again, the art of planting plants for healing pantries, sorry, with those pantries to maintain. Fatima Martinez suggested activities which promote a sense of belonging in the community. They could be based on experiential education, their history of urban gardens, workshops on how to grow year round. So you see there's an array of different things that could be brought here. Um, programs that teach the outdoors and sustainability. permaculture and horticulture courses. Again, and these are just, just again, this is just a few of many food festivals and potlucks, movie nights on a big screen, cer certifications. This is so much great stuff right here. And again, we this, this right here is only the beginning of many dialogues as to what program is going to look like. Um, as a community, our voices, your voice matters in this. This is a park that's going to be utilized by you, served for you, by you. And so just coming up with programming ideas and how, how to just really jumpstart everything is really going to gel the community even more better. So... Um, I just wanna thank you um, for your suggestions and so forth. So in the event of time, um, uh, Helena, I'll pass it to Helena to see if we have any other further questions. Thank you again. Thanks so much, Nikki. Uh, looks like we are getting 
A good number of questions. And again, feel free to use that Q&A feature or the chat. Um, it looks like there were a couple earlier um, about the hours of the garden and a community flower pot. Uh, I can chime in on this a little bit, but I know that Anthony and I are having some plans of possibly building out a nice garden bed right in the front of Pershing that we would invite volunteers to help plant and maintain. Anthony, you want to cover anything about that? Yes, I can add to that. And I did write in the chat that we are hoping to have a volunteer built uh, community garden uh, flower plot that is right in front of the entrance. And along with that should be a bench so people can sit and just enjoy the flowers. And originally we were hoping to do that on Earth Day, but depending on how construction for the rest of the community garden plots go, we may have to just put all those resources towards finishing that so that people can start the garden plots. So please stay tuned. And Earth Day is Thursday, April 22nd. Helena and I will be there all day. And if you'd like to stop by, please RSVP by emailing me. And my email, I'll put again in the chat. I wanna make sure that we are able to get to everyone's questions and um, just letting everyone know we may go over by a couple of minutes because we wanna make sure we hear from you and answer all of your questions and get to everything. It looks like there's another question about the gardening season timeframe. Uh, what will become of the garden during the winter? Will the garden beds be covered on like a greenhouse style to allow for the continued use through the winter season? I think the community garden beds will be open until October, but Anthony, if you wanna cover in um, about the possibility of winter gardening. As, as far as the community garden plots go, Helena pretty much summed it up. We will be, we'll be shutting down the community garden portion. The urban farm portion, however, will be getting built out and getting ready for next spring. And the reason for that, and this is seasonal, is, I mean, obviously for the weather, but then each spring we do want to open the lottery up again so that new people can get involved. So it's, def it's a seasonal lottery uh, for each year. And uh, Fatima, yes, to answer your question about keeping updated outside of the Zoom, you can email Anthony and Zoraida. I believe they've shared their emails in the chat with any additional questions that you have. Um, you'll be kept updated. Once you fill out an application for a community plot, there's an option to write out what your preferred contact is. So whether that be through phone or email um, and, I, and social media as well. And I believe Anthony mentioned a little bit about the tools that are gonna be on site for gardeners to use. We will be having a shed and Anthony can chime in a little bit about more of the specifics of the tools. Yes, thanks Helena. And yes, I did write in a comment uh, chat as well. And just as Helena said, there will be a shed there. Uh, there'll be tools. Uh, we do ask that people have their own gloves so that we are not sharing gloves for obvious reasons. While people are on site, it's worth mentioning that we will be uh, fo focused on COVID safety. So we do ask that masks are worn at all time and that we are keeping the group size within the community garden plot to 10 people. So I'm going to say that again. So we are keeping that. If you do, uh, if you do win the lottery and you are able to have a community garden plot, then that uh, you will get all these rules and notifications on all this stuff. But it is a shared tool process, just to answer that question again. And there will also be staff people there to help you with your garden plots. So again, new farmers, gardeners, uh, Helena and I will be there quite a bit. And there'll be someone there from Poughkeepsie Farm Project occasionally. And then as the season gets going, there'll be someone there from Ecological Citizens Project. So we will have a bunch of people there to help. Thanks so much, everyone. And just to keep everyone in the interest of time, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us um, and the emails in the chat if you have something more specific. And now I will turn it back over to Mario and Minister Joy to close us out. 
Okay, so if everybody is still on here, there you have it. Basically, you can't beat it. We have free plots. Uh, organic vegetables and produce can be grown. It's major community involvement. We're looking forward to everyone basically spreading the word. If you're interested in a plot, then of course, you know, you know where to reach out to. All that information is in the chat. And we just want to make sure that, you know, we have a, a, a project that begins to move forward. And we're looking forward to everybody's involvement. I'm looking forward to working with you. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Minister Joyner so she can also help us talk about the next steps. All right. Well, first and foremost, I think everybody did an excellent job at presenting the future of Persian Avenue. There are great things in store, and I'm happy on behalf of St. Mark and on behalf of Minister Desiree S. King. We are happy to, to be a part of it. Um, so what I would ask of the community is to make sure that you make your voices heard. This is all about the north side of the Kissy. This is about community. So we are asking everyone and we are inviting everyone who is on here, um, you know, pass the word around and get you some garden plots, grow you some good, sustainable food. And we just want to make sure that our residents are always kept first and foremost in mind. And we are just looking forward to this project flourishing way beyond um, the Poughkeepsie limits. So we will keep everybody updated. Um, if you're, I don't know, subscribe to me like the emails or um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit up anybody here on the panel. We will be more than happy to address anything that we can. Okay. And also just want to let you know, before you get off here, there will be a brief uh, post survey. We encourage everyone to please fill out that survey so we can actually uh, be able to help uh, move things forward. So with that, I will basically turn it over to, is Jamie joining us for any final, final comments? Just looking forward to seeing folks at the site and uh, supporting new gardeners with growing wonderful vegetables. And thank you everybody for being here. Yep, thank you everybody. Okay. Great job everyone. And I look forward to working with everyone. So make sure, uh, like I said, stay on so you can do the post survey.